Welcome to today's vlog and today we are shooting part two of our shabby chic video last week we showed you um, how to paint a hydrangea onto a heart shaped piece of fabric and today we are going to show you how to take that fabric now that it has dried and how to sew and stuff these little heart shaped pillows they're adorable when they're all done and we're going to show you a few different ways that you can finish them off and do decorating around them Okay, so now we're finishing Sarah's heart, and she will stuff it, sew it, and we'll show you the end result. So here we go. So here is her solid side, which will be the back of her heart, and here is the front side of the side that she painted. So we'll put right sides together, so just like that. And we'll see if we matched it. Sometimes we don't match it perfectly, so I have to kind of play with it. Since we just drew this heart ourselves, it's going to be a little bit technical. There we go. So I'll put a pin right here, and then I usually put one on the bottom too. So Sarah, you are ready to sew. Let me trim up the edges here to make it match. So Sarah is going to sew about a quarter inch in the seam. Okay, so I'm going to put my zipper, zipper foot down. And start sewing. And remember to leave a space to stuff. While you're sewing that up, Sarah, I'm going to give a few facts about hydrangeas. Um, I learned that hydrangeas are the flowers that are supposed to be given for our fourth wedding anniversary. I also learned that they're hundreds and hundreds of years old and that the emperors used to send hydrangeas to send an apology to countries and to people. Um, in Latin, hydrangea means water absorbed. I don't know what the gem means, but it's a, the only plant that drinks water from its flower down to the stem. Um, I also know you can add minerals. I think one of them is iron to change the color of a hydrangea flower. And I know I've seen violet, pink, purple, blue, red, white, rust, variegated. Um, and also I said that they had five petals. You know they don't. I was looking at an artificial one for a uh, model. But they actually have four little fat petals. And that's something I learned by going to the nursery and looking at a real one. So I stand corrected. How are you doing with your heart? Pretty good. Okay, let's check you out. Okay, stop on that pencil line. Yeah. Okay, now see what she's doing? She is stopped. Move your hands. 
and she's leaving an opening for her stuffing. So that's about three inches. Mm -hmm. So now turn it backwards and go around it twice so okay. our seams never rupture. So this way? Mm -hmm. And she's going to second stitch the entire heart and she's going to leave the window open. Okay. Now this doesn't take too long. I would say about two or three minutes. And when she is through sewing her heart two times around for double strength, leaving a two or three inch opening, she's going to snip all around the heart, almost to the seam, so it'll be pliable and kind of bendable and so the arches won't be too sharp and harsh. So I think you're there. Are you there? It's taking me a little longer. Oh, okay. It's been a while since I've done Okay. I'm so, scared to go really fast on it. Yeah, it's better to go slow and get it right and have it without the seams. I want to do a sewing video in the next few weeks um, and make the babies some little rompers. Is that what you call them? Yeah. We'll see if I can get to it. Okay, are you finished? Gotta finish one more okay. Okay. So now we can see that Sarah has sewn from marking to marking, leaving this open. She went all the way around. She did it, and then she turned it and went around again twice. And so she's left this much for our stuffing. You can see the little hole, the little opening. See? But before we stuff, she's going to cut around every half inch, so it will be easy when we turn it inside out to round it off. Okay. So, Sarah, I'm going to film you. Okay, so Sarah's doing her cutting. She's going to cut all the way around the heart, except she won't cut where the opening is. She will not cut here or here. She'll leave this alone, okay? All right, so turn your work and cut over there. Okay, do it there. Uh-huh. On all the way around to the beginning. I have to think of what craft we're going to do next week. Now the reason she's cutting, as I said, was when we turn the work inside out, the arch won't be all puckered and hard and sharp. This makes it just bend all over the place, like a corrugated cardboard when you want to bend it without breaking it. That's sort of the same idea. Good job. I think we're just about done. About cut one more. Okay, so now, okay. okay, so now you've got all your work is, is done, and you're going to turn it inside out through your little opening, okay. which is here. So start turning so here's it inside my opening. And you know, I bought this bag of uh, polyfill from Michael's Craft. It's very expensive. Sometimes it's between seven and twelve dollars. But this, I hit the jackpot. It came with a little stick, and it's the best little stick. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Sarah, would you grab that stick over there? It's in the back. Yeah, here. She's going to show. It almost looks like a um, little knitting needle. And I put clear nail polish on it so it doesn't sound so sharp and, you know, full of... What, what do you call it, Sarah? Splinters. Splinters. Yeah. And it just feels so good with the clear nail polish on it. And you push as hard as you can to make your corners curve. Yeah. This is very important because you don't want a heart that has all kinds of pointy edges. And how you do this is going to determine how beautifully well it will look when you stuff it. See there's some, see how it has mm -hmm. the sharp corners without to it. There's another way. I don't know if that's because of my sewing though. No, it's not your sewing. It's that you just have to really kind of swipe it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, there's a too sharp on the corner there. Just round it. Do it from over there too. There you go, really good. Okay, so turn it that way and do the point. She's gonna do the point of her heart, the bottom point. Beautiful, Sarah. Okay, okay so now show your opening. Okay, so this opening is where she's gonna stuff. And when she stuffs, let me start you on this. Okay, so at first I just get a little ball of stuffing and I pretty much try to stuff my whole hand in there because I do the, uh, the arches first. Okay, so there's one arch, and then this is going to be the second arch, and that's how I start. So I'm going to really push it in there, because that's like the premise of the whole heart. Okay, and I'm going to stuff all those little pointy things out. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat. 
And just keep repeating this until it is full. You don't want it too full because then it'll be too fat to hang on anything if you want to hang it on a door or chair. Okay, so I have taken over stuffing now. And she said to let you know you want to be careful here in the middle to not overstuff, you said? Am I right, Mom? No, you need to stuff each arch before you start the middle. The middle, because you don't want to have it collapse. In the right. Middle. If the arches aren't hard, it's all going to look bulky. It's actually bulky. kind of fun to stuff it. I know, it's kind of... I don't know the word. And you can use, your, you can use your tool too, right? To yes, keep. that's a wonderful tool. Like I said, if it doesn't come with your batting, uh, use a, the back of a spoon or a crochet hook or even a knitting needle uh, that you could maybe put tape on so it doesn't puncture a hole. See now, I feel like mine is a little bit... Well, you got to play with it. You didn't do these tight enough. Okay, I'll put a little more Yeah, you there. just play with it. Sometimes after I'm finished stuffing, I slap it around like a pancake mm -hmm. like this. It's so exciting to see them come to life. Okay, so I'll just keep doing this until it is all mm -hmm. stuffed, and then we'll come right back and show you the rest. Okay, now you need to start stuffing your point or it'll collapse. Yeah. Let me show you her name. I'm very proud of her name. We didn't sew it in. So many hearts that I've made, I accidentally sew the, the name in and you can't see it, but she did a great job. Okay, so we'll stuff and we'll be Okay, so hi there. Sarah has now finished stuffing her pillow. She has sewn it together, got at most of the lumps. She still has her little two and a half inches left where she has put the fiber fill in. And she's ready to sew. I'm going to start her so she can see what the blanket stitch is. This is knit crocheting. It's cotton, mercerized cotton. You can get it at any craft store. If you don't want to use this, you can use yarn. You can use um, string, any medium that uh, will sew. So I'm going to take uh, probably about a yard and I'm going to tie a little slip knot on the end like this. There's our little knot and then I'm going to start sewing. Now when I first started making these I would sew it with thread and then I'd have to go all over it again twice with the string. So I learned that why can't you just do it with a string? So let me get my glasses here so I can see. All right so we're gonna do a blanket stitch. So we're gonna um, hide our knot inside the seam. There we go. And then before I start my blanket stitch, there we go. And blanket stitch is just, you're sewing regularly and then before you close it, let's see if I can, there we go. I'm gonna stick the needle through this hoop. And they used to use this on blankets when they did the blanket binding because it really stays for years and years and years. Okay, so we'll be doing that and sewing up the little hole and we'll be back when we're done. All right, now, so Sarah has done her edging, her blanket stitch all the way around. I don't know if you can see it, it's done in blue. And not only does the blanket stitch close the heart and it seals it very well. Okay, so now Sarah has done the blanket stitch all around her heart. You wanna come close? And the blanket stitch has a hole, if you can see the little windows, the little circles. So inside each stitch, she has crocheted three double crochets. Three double, three double, three double. And it made a beautiful trim. But this is not something you have to do. No, you can put lace or just leave the heart blank. But it's very pretty if you crochet around it. But the blanket stitch is the best salvage to do it on because it gives you something to adhere it onto. So now she's going to outline it with purple and just chain. She's going to chain four and go to the next scallop. And she's going to do that all the way around and then it will be all done. Okay, so I'm finished with my crochet and I did the blanket stitch in blue and I did uh, three scallops all around. So now I'm just um, threading some blue ribbon through it and by the time I come to here all the way around the heart, we will be finished. So I'll show you when I'm done weaving. Whoa! Okay, so here are our hearts all done, the final product. There is my mom's, it has the pretty blue bow. And here is mine with a white bow. And we are finished.
Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed our two-part video tutorial on how to make a shabby chic heart for your home. If you've enjoyed this video and you would like to be part of our giveaway, we are going to be giving away one of these adorable shabby chic hearts that my mom has made. She has donated one, and so on Sunday, I will be announcing our winner of the shabby chic heart contest. And all you have to do, it's three things that you have to do to take part in this contest. It is absolutely free. First thing you need to do is subscribe to our blog. Hit the subscribe button. Even if you subscribe anonymously or put your name up there or you're a vlogger yourself and you want to put your channel up there, please hit subscribe and we'll subscribe back to your channel as well. Secondly, we want you to please leave a comment. Tell us what you liked about this tutorial, if you think it was a good tutorial, if you didn't think it was a good tutorial, let us know what you thought. And then third, let us know what you would like to do with this pillow if you were to win the giveaway. Are you going to keep it for yourself? Are you going to give it as a gift for someone special? Perhaps you're gonna put it in a special place in your home. Just let us know that in the comments below. So three things guys, okay? Subscribe, leave us a comment about how you liked the tutorial, and then leave us a comment about what you plan to do with the Shabby She Heart should you win it yourself. So we hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned next week for another uh, Crafts by Sarah tutorial, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. So I have taken about 10 takes trying to get this right because I keep saying we're going to auction a heart, we're going to subscribe to a heart. I keep messing it up. I don't know why. But I forgot to tell you that... Um, we are going to choose the winner on Saturday night. So you need to get in all of your comments and your subscribes by Saturday evening because on Sunday I will announce who won and this is how, so it's completely fair. If you are entering to win and you subscribe, I'll see who subscribes. But also when you leave your comment and you put your name, then we will take those comments and I will put all their, com you know, print them out and I will put the comments in a hat and my son will not see who it is because I will fold up the papers and my little four-year-old Robbie is going to choose a name out of the hat and that will be the winner for the Shabby Chic card. Okay, thank you.